What is one of the real keys to being able to catch fish on top water? Um, doesn't have anything to do with working the top water. It's got a lot to do with what to do when you get a bite. Good morning, guys and girls. Good morning. June 19, June 19, reading from a Catch a Better Life book on the Catch a Life Better channel on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel if you're not subscribed to it. If you're a Facebook person, Jimmy Houston Outdoors, all capital letters on Facebook. We post these at 5 o'clock every morning Central Time. We don't read them at 5 o'clock. Obviously, it's not daylight at 5 o'clock in the morning. And just about everywhere, certainly here at our ranch, it's not, not daylight at 5 o'clock in the morning. But getting pretty close nowadays, getting pretty close nowadays. But we have a scripture from the Word of God for every single day. We have a devotion that I wrote built around fishing and a fishing tip for every day. Your life will become better. You will catch a better life if you get involved in this channel. If you have some friends that you want to have a better life, get them involved in this channel. We have about 29,000 people on the Catch a Better Life channel on YouTube. Over, uh, over 660,000 people on Facebook. Uh, we've got three YouTube channels. Subscribe to everything we got. Just get on there and subscribe to all of them. We post a few of these on TikTok, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, our X as it's called nowadays. Uh, looking at June 19, it says in John 8, 7, it says, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Let him cast the first stone. This is Jesus talking. This is red letters. And uh, this is one of the greatest stories in the Bible. Here's what I wrote about it. One of the most priceless times to be on the water is when it's dead calm. Look at this lake behind me. Yeah, there's some ripples as you get on further out, but it's pretty much dead calm. We cast, and the ripples seem to travel forever before they die down. As magic as this calm is, it can pose a really big problem. You know what that problem is? The fish know we are there. It's so quiet, so calm, so peaceful. When that lure hits the water and those ripples go forever, bass know it exactly. They know we're there. They, they know that boat is invading their water. We need to fish with our trolling motors at low speeds on days like this. We now need, need to be careful and not bang anything down in the boat. You know, th drop a tackle box or you pick up a rod, throw your rod down, pick up another one. Don't bang anything in the boat. You have to be very, 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 very quiet. That's right, be quiet. This can be actually more like hunting than it is fishing. You know, today with today's forward facing sonars like our Garmin LiveScope, that's pretty much hunting and not fishing right there. But if you're doing that in dead calm water, again, be very, very quiet. Like noise on the quiet water, when we condemn others of sin, it can actually destroy the calm in our lives, especially if we're guilty of that same sin. So be very careful about condemning other people, Christians or non-Christians. Really be careful about condemning other Christians because that becomes judging when you're doing that. So be very careful when you condemn other Christians. But you shouldn't be condemning anyone because it's very likely we might be guilty of that same sin. Today's scripture on this story, the religious leaders, the higher than my mighty, righteous, a lot of them self-righteous, business uh, religious leaders brought a woman to Jesus whom they had caught in the very act of committing adultery. Actually caught them in the act, is what the Bible says. And then they asked Jesus to confirm their plan to stone her to death. To stone her to death. That was the penalty for committing adultery, to be stoned to death. It's interesting they didn't bring the man along with her here. But Jesus, Jesus, knowing their sin, turned their own words against them. Turned their own words against them when he told them this right here. He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. It doesn't tell us the whole story of this Bible, what sin Jesus was thinking about. Well, we know there's no one without sin. Jesus himself was the only person to ever walk on this earth that didn't commit sin. I'm kind of thinking that he was thinking specifically about that sin of adultery. That's what I'm kind of thinking. And it's curious that in that story, he bent down and took his finger and started writing something in the dust. It doesn't say what he was writing in the dust in the Bible. 
but he might have been writing down some ladies' names. <clears throat> Mary. <laughs> Linda. Maybe he glanced up. I don't know. Joanne. Sally. Whatever names he was writing around. My creative mind can kind of think that he might have been writing some names down of some ladies that some of those religious leaders perhaps were committing that exact same sin with. I don't know. I don't know. Probably unimportant to the Bible would have told us that. It, I, I guess I, I would have had to kind of think about what, my, what he might be writing in the sand. But evidently, he was writing something in the sand that made those religious leaders think of and convicted them of their sin. So not only were they not going to cast the first stone, they weren't going to cast a stone. They all left, one by one, beginning with the oldest, it said. One by one, beginning with the oldest, they all left. Jesus, knowing their sin, and he knows your sin and my sin. Jesus, knowing their sin, turned their own words against them. Today, our best bet might be to not condemn others. That's right. We just don't condemn others. Whatever they're doing wrong, eh, we just won't condemn them of it. Here's our tip for today. Always wait until you feel the fish to set the hook on topwater baits. What do we do when we get a blow up on a topwater bait? Normally, we're setting that hook. Sometimes we do it just, we were set the hook so quickly because of that blow up. We set it before the fish even got it in its mouth. But what the proper way to do it is once the fish blows up on a topwater bait, wait until you feel that fish before you set the hook. If you'll do that, you'll catch a lot more fish per strike on top water, and you'll lose a lot less as well. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one. And remember, I sure do love you.